Hello. Hey, Bunnell. How are you? Hold on just a second, will you? Well, young ladies, uh, thank you very, very much. I hope you got everything you needed. Thank you. Have a good day. Thought you'd like to know. We picked up four more markets. Four more markets, huh? Hey, listen, why am I surprised? We got a good show. You betcha. When are you flying in for the awards, tonight or tomorrow? Kurt, I'd really rather not come in for this Patsy thing. <laughs> got a lot of packing to do. I could use the extra time. You must be kidding, Zach. You got two animals up for awards. Publicity alone would be invaluable. It'll put a real damper on things if you don't come. Now, come on. Now, you can pick up the awards if we happen to win. Look, it's your show, too, right? And listen, you big ham, you know you make better speeches than I do. Thank you. I'm not taking a bow for anything you worked so hard for. It wouldn't be right. It would mean a lot to the show. More than that. It'd mean a lot to me. Well, Curtis, when you put it that way, how can I refuse? You yeah, yeah. Pick me up at Burbank. Great. Oh, oh Zach, one more thing. Uh, bring my golf clothes with you. I think I spent a couple of days at uh, Palm Springs. Catch up my golf. Loosen up a little. Do you realize that you got suitcases full of nothing but golf clothes scattered all over this country? Yeah, well, can I help it if I'm a frustrated golf bum? <laughs> I guess not, but it sure makes me glad I'm an animal trainer. Okay, 7 o'clock, Burbank. So long. He had his chance to die, and he blew it. He was a wine up, you know that? You don't know him, Larry. He was a rummy. He was on Skid Row. Find that hard to believe? He was on his way out. Everybody knew it. We tried to help him, but we couldn't. Everything that mattered was gone. The loss of Karen years ago, I finally caught up. And he started drinking. And he was written off. Oh, every so often he appeared at my door. Stinking. Drunk. Dying. And then he stopped coming. And I, I thought he was dead. Then one night, there was a thump at my door. It was Zach. And he was uh, standing there. He was holding a puppy. Little whining, dirty, mongrel puppy. He'd walked from downtown L.A. To Beverly Hill, that's 20 miles. And you know what he said? Have you got any milk? <laughs> and I, I, I sat there all night. Nobody said anything. We didn't speak. And I watched him. And the puppy. must have dozed, because uh, suddenly I looked up, and it was morning. He was still lying there, just crooning at the puppy, and he was chuckling. And I knew that I mean, nobody said anything. There was a look on his face. I can't, I, I can't tell you what it was. But I knew that he had made a decision. He had decided to survive. He was determined to survive. He was determined to live. That's the kind of man he is. He had decided to live. And I know he's alive. If he if he got out of that plane in one piece, he knows enough about the mountains and the snow to survive. And more important, he wants to survive. I know that. Where are they looking? Waiting for you to come up here. How many planes? How many planes? Yeah. Well, I don't care about the cost. The hell with the cost. Yeah. Yeah, have you checked over for a Of course.
horse at night. Man, he may be lighting a fire or something. I don't really understand. This isn't just an ordinary plane crash. Half the country's concerned. Yeah, I know. No, I I'll leave this line open just for you. Right. Do your best. 